Okay, let's take a look at adding a grunge-style border to our pictures. Now, the whole thing really is about experimenting, because what works on one picture, you may not necessarily like on a different picture. So, you know, it's all about playing, seeing what we can come up with, exploring the different possibilities. First things first, though, coming to our background layer, we're going to use Command-J or Control-J to duplicate it. We're now going to go to Image, dropping down to canvas size. Now with canvas size, if you uncheck the relative button, it's telling us there it is there, it's the width and the height. I've got inches, call me old fashioned, but you can use percent, pixels, centimeters, millimeters, points, etc, etc, entirely up to you, but I'm going to stick with inches. Now we want to add uh, 2.5 inches to the width, now you can do the maths there and you can do the same for the height there, or you can tick relative, which makes life a lot easier because I'm now simply going to put in 2.5 I'm going to press the tab key which takes me to the next one 2.5 which is pretty good now the canvas extension color you can select foreground, background, white, grey, whatever I'm going to go for white for the moment and you can change it by the way you can click in the box there and you can select whatever color you want clicking OK isn't going to add it to layer 1 here, even though we're working on it, this is the live layer, it's going to add it to the background layer. Right, the next job to do this grungy style border is we're going to create a path. Now, if you haven't got your paths panel already open, if you go to window, dropping down, there it is, paths, there's our paths panel. To make a path, first of all, we have to make a selection. Right, so coming back to layer 1, we're going to use this to make our selection. Bring in your cursor over the thumbnail, pressing Command or Control. You'll notice the way your cursor changes, clicking down, there's the selection. To make it into a path, simply come to your Paths panel. It's the little icon that looks a bit like a chain going over a cog there. Just click on it, it has disappeared. Don't worry, it is there, it is now a work path. OK, let's come across. Let's pick up our brush tool. Let's pop into our brush panel here. We've got all these various brushes available to us. One of my favourite, just let me reset this a second so I can show you exactly what we're going to do. If we just come to this, one of my favourite for this sort of effect is to click on the side, to drop down. It's the faux finish brushes there. I'm going to click append, which is going to add it to the bottom of our list. There they are is something like that. Could look pretty good. Yeah, nice square brush. Right, next, just pressing enter or return to get rid of that. If we pop up, we need to pick up our brush engine. You can go to window, clicking on brush, which will open it. There it is there. Let's go to brush tip shape. That's the one. That's the one we've got selected. Looks pretty good. Come into spacing, you'll notice the way we can change the spacing. Let's take the spacing up like that. You can change the size of the brush. Let's see that's a bit big there, so let's just drop it down a little bit. That looks pretty good. Come into the shape dynamics. Now the jitter, we can make it bigger, we can make it smaller, perhaps something like that. Now the shape diameter, we can move this in and out. Now the angle jitter. At this stage, the whole thing is beginning to look um, rather sort of... Um, organic. I think we've just discovered ourselves a different life form. Moving swiftly on, we got the roundness jitter again. Oh look, it's now got a pulse. Pretty good with that. And the minimum roundness, just playing with it before we come to the scattering. This is where the fun can really start. You can sort of blow the brush out like that. You can bring it in a little bit. The count's there. Yeah, looks good. Doesn't really matter because what you can do is now just bring your brush out. Just press enter or return and around it goes. And if you think, no, I think we should change that, just use Command Z or Control Z to undo it. Let's just bring that in a little bit like this and bring that one in and come to the tip shape, bring in, make it a bit smaller. That's it. Press Enter or Return. That looks better. There's the start of our grungy border. Incidentally, if you think, I'm just going to use Command or Control Z to undo that. I want to keep my image, I want to preserve my picture, I just want the grungy style border to be on the outside. Click on the background, press enter or return, and there it is. You can now apply your grunge style border just to the outside of the image, entirely up to you. 
I think we're going to go for the inside as well, so I'm just going to click on it. I'm going to leave that as it is, though. Just press Enter or Return again. You can see it goes in completely differently. OK, moving on. Let's pick another brush to work with. Let's come in, let's take a look, and uh, let's go for something, perhaps that sort of thing that looks, at the moment, doesn't look much. You can see there it is showing us in our brush panel below, just clicking on this. Again, going for the spacing. It's the spacing which makes the difference. That looks pretty good like that. The size, yep, you need to take the size up. Just bringing it out, that looks better like that. Shape dynamics, and I think the scattering is where this one is going to. Yep, it's definitely got a pulse. Moving to the counts, and the counts, we can count more or less. And uh, this one here, let's just try the brownness. Worth just pressing enter or return. Yeah, okay, Command Z or Control Z. Coming back, I think the uh, actual sort of where it is there, the scattering is just a little bit too much, so bringing it back into place would be pretty good. Enter or return, that's better. Around that goes like that. And just to give it, I think a, a little bit of spikiness would work a treat with this. So just coming down, let's just take a look. What can we use for spikiness? We can come in and perhaps uh, something like that. That looks pretty good. Quite like the, what that's doing, just moving it out a touch or two. Coming down for the scattering again with this. No, we're going to keep it in quite sort of tight on that. Just the brush tip, that looks pretty good. Press and enter, return. Round it goes, and there it is. Job done. You can see the spikiness just coming through there. OK, let's just close it down, clicking on the top corner. In it goes, out of the way. Looks pretty good so far. Coming to the Paths panel, because you can see we've got that white line going around there. Coming in, grabbing hold of the work path, we can get rid of that. There's our grunge style border. I think what I'd like to do though is perhaps, you know, we've got a grunge style border on a nice clean white background. I'm not too sort of sure that works too well. So let's just come in. We're going to double click because it's a locked layer. The background layer is a locked layer. Double clicking will bring up our new layer. Layer 0 sounds fine to me. We can now drop down. We're going to go to Pattern Overlay. You can see we've now sort of bubble wrapped it. Clicking on this, one of my favorite ones to use is the artist surfaces. Now that's what's showing here. So just come to the side panel, clicking on this, selecting artist surfaces. If we click on it, you can see the various effects we've got. We can carry on our grungy theme. I like that. Click OK to it. Perhaps it's a bit over the top. Double click. Don't forget, we can come in, we can change the scaling. We can change the opacity. We can just drop it down so it just fades into the distance. You might also like to come in and put in a col color overlay. Clicking in a box, let's pick up a picture or a picture, pick up a tone color from our image, something like that. Looks pretty good. Click OK to that. Dropping this down, the opacity down, you can now see you've got the tone working in with the pattern overlay in the background there. I like the way that's going together. Click OK to it. Job done. If we just switch this off, you can see there it is. That's our background we've now got. You can still see the grungy style background in the in there as well. But there it is. Right clicking. We're going to go to black. The reason I'm not using F on the keyboard is because I use a, a restricted uh, screen for the actual <laughs> video. If I press F on the keyboard, it would fill the whole lot and you wouldn't see half the image. And if I press tab on the keyboard, there is our finished image. Go on, give it a try. It's all about experiment, in experimenting. Try different brushes, try different settings, see what you come up. But it really can, it can be a lot of fun, and it can really help to set your images off a treat. Until the next time, it's happy imaging, and take care.